I wasn't born in this country. I didn't grow up in any one particular religion. I have a mixed race background and I'm gay. It has been natural to see myself as an individual. It's been a challenge to imagine that self as part of something larger. Like many of you here tonight, I grew up in what I would call survival mode. And when you're in that mode at five, at 10, at 15, there isn't a lot of space for words like community, for words like us and we. There's only space for I and me. Growing up, I was a target. Speaking the right way, standing the right way, holding your wrist the right way. Every day was a test, and there were a thousand ways to fail. And when you failed the test, which was guaranteed, there was a price to pay. Emotional, psychological, physical. The first time I tried to kill myself, I was 15. And when someone asks me if that was a cry for help, I say no. You only cry for help if you believe there's help to cry for. By 2011, I'd made the decision to walk away from acting and many of the things I previously believed so important. The only thing I was left with was what I had when I started. I and me. And it was not enough. When I thought about that kid somewhere out there who might be inspired or moved by me taking a stand and speaking my truth, my mental response was consistently, no thank you. In 2012, I joined a men's group called the Mankind Project, which is a men's group for all men. And it was via that community that I became a member and proud supporter of the Human Rights Campaign. Several weeks ago, when I was drafting my letter to the St. Petersburg International Film Festival, declining their invitation to attend, a small, nagging voice in my head insisted that no one would notice. But this time, finally, I knew that voice was wrong. I thought if even one person notices, this letter in which I speak my truth and integrate my small story into a much larger and more important one, I thought, let me be to someone else what no one was to me.